Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a super exciting video planned and I just really want to get into it, so stay tuned. Okay, so as you can tell, there's a wide array of writing utensils. We're gonna push that aside for now um, and talk about this. So this is my Hobonichi Weeks that I picked for 2023. Now this is my first year going with Hobonichi, so I really don't know what to expect out of this planner. Now I've been following a lot of like Hobonichi users and getting all the inspiration um and honestly like they kind of made me regret not getting a Hobonichi Weeks Mega. Um however this is literally my favorite color um this is kind of similar like periwinkle light blue like I love it so um I am happy with this planner but I just I don't know it's, it, it, it kind of has me nervous let's just put it that way. Um, so what I ended up doing is I went on Amazon because I did not want to purchase another order from Hobonichi directly because the shipping is so much. So if I can avoid placing another order on their site, I'm going to do that. Um, now with that being said, I, I purchased these for $12. If I would have purchased them from the Hobonichi site, um, if they would have been, I think it was like three something, um. They're 5.50 yen, so um, really cheap, but you know, I had to pay for the markup. I understand that. So I did um, purchase a pack of the, I want to call them companion notebooks, but that's not what they are called. Um, hint, hint at what I may be purchasing soon. But um, either way, these are the little notebooks. They're super s slim. Like I know people have said that before, but like, gosh, I was not expecting that. They can fit in there with your weeks very easily. Um, but yeah, so I did pick up a three pack of these. Um, I figured these two kind of go the best with this planner and this one doesn't really go. Now my plans for this one is to do some swatching. So I've been dying to play with the Hobonichi paper. I have yet to test it out. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. But before that even, I purchased something off of Etsy and I'm so excited for it. So it literally got here today. Um, I have waited for I think like a good month at this point, almost a month. But here she is. She came all the way from Hong Kong. Um, and yeah, let's just, let's look at her. This is my, okay, so I may have taken her out of the package, but I have not taken her out of this. So this will be my first impressions. Um, I've been dying to get home today from work to see her. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Okay, so this, oh, this is like, velvet oh my goodness I love the feel of this as soon as I seen this I knew I needed it um and I will link it down below if it's still available if not I will link the um shop that I purchased it from her name is Sakura Handcraft and I think this is true Mina Perhonen fabric um if not it's replicas of her fabric um I don't think like I think okay so Hobonichi sells styles like this and they're called the path or no not path um piece covers where they take pieces of the original Ho um, Mina Perhonen fabrics and they make these covers and there's only so many every year well this year's I liked it, but it wasn't my favorite, and it was kind of pricey um, for a first year. Don't know if I'm really going to stick with this type of planner, so I opted to not get it. And 
then I seen this one and I knew I needed it because it is just so gorgeous. So super excited. I know it's like not a true Hobonichi cover, um, but it is, it's so gorgeous and I am very excited, um, to, to use this. So it comes with like a similar little clasp here with a little butterfly, just like they do, um, on the Mina Perhonen covers. And this zipper is really nice. It's like zipping like butter. Now the only thing I can tell right away is that this is a different color gold. Um, This almost looks rose gold. So I don't like that, but it's not going to drive me too, too crazy. Oh, look at that. So this is the same exact setup as um you would find from Hobonichi themselves. So literally identical now i i don't have one from <laughs> um hobonichi to compare but they look almost identical like no different um this little zipper pull is small just like they are from hobonichi and then you have all of these which currently let me grab nothing's showing currently I am using my Moterm cover as a wallet um, with my print Prussian weeks which is the current like everyday carry planner that I'm using so there's two pockets here I'm assuming I'll probably put the planner in here if not there and then there's one two three, four, five, six, seven card slots, and they are depth adjusted, so they're not like, they don't go all the way down. So perfect for cards, and then you have this little loop here, which I don't think would fit very many pens. Um, yeah, so I think it's literally just meant there to be there for your clip of your pen, um, which even that's kind of hard. <laughs> Let me see. There. Yeah. So just like that. Now let's um, set our Hobonichi for next year in here because I'm really excited. I've been wanting to um, put this planner in somewhere in her home. So I'm going to first. Yeah. No. Oh. Darn, I don't think it's going to fit with this cover, <laughs> which I, if you know me, I love having my covers and those cover on covers. So yeah, that is a bummer. Let's see. Darn it. So I don't, that's going to really bug me because... I feel like I really need my planner in one of these. Because uh, I need those extra like pockets that this adds. Hmm. Okay, so I'm a little sad now. <laughs> um, let's take her out. I do have this little pocket and I do have other pockets that I could potentially um, put in here. So I, I mean, I have options. Yeah, see it fits in there now. So yeah, I think we're just gonna have to look at some other options, but I mean, and this is nice too because I can like get the feel of the cover which is really really nice um but yeah we'll have to see what ends up happening but for now I am excited so that's she zips up and fits in there really nice um one thing that I'm also gonna say is and I've I watched a review on this planner before like this cover before I purchased it um it's super, th like, slim, so 
as your planner grows, it might not zip or it might not fit the best in here. So there's that as well, but that didn't stop me from buying it because um, I feel like I can fit anything in here. <laughs> like I'm, even if I can't zip it, like this current planner I'm using, I cannot button it anymore. So I just like fold it like that and carry it in my purse as such. So yeah, I'm really excited and I love how this looks. It was definitely worth the wait and I'm excited. So if I end up enjoying this, um, I'm definitely going to purchase another cover from Hobonichi this time. I do want to kind of compare them, but for now this is going to be what I start out the new year in. So yeah, um, another thing, let's see, I feel like I could fit these little notebooks. Yeah, those fit in there. And I can also slide this, which I'm going to show you. I have some sticky notes on it. It acts as my dashboard, but I have... I made these little dashboards um, out of this little extra piece of plastic and I just kind of shove it in there to be my page marker so I really love um, that you can repurpose those so those just came on the front um, cover to protect the planner during shipping and I saved them so definitely a good use there so I'm going to keep everything together um, and I actually might also just slide this in here. Jeez, I don't even know if... Yeah, like this is definitely a tight squeeze. Alright, but we got it all in there. So she is packed and ready to go. Um, but yeah, I was super excited so I had to share that with you guys. So yeah, now we can get into the testing of the papers. So I'm super excited to do this. Like I said, this is my first time testing anything out and I definitely grabbed a huge array of pens and markers. And then this, I know I'm kind of going through a lot right now, but I picked this up at Walmart. So um, if this intrigues you, you can go there to find it. Um, but I have been intrigued with or interested in watercolors lately so um this is like kind of a little sampler palette type of thing that I seen while I was shopping and before I go out and buy like a really nice watercolor palette I thought that this would be a good starting base to see if it's something that I would even use so I thought we could play around with some watercolors today and um, test out the paper to the full max because I heard that the Hobonichi paper does wonders with um, watercolor as well. So yeah, we'll save that for last. Let's first go through all these pens. So we're going to start out with the Papermate Ink Joy Gel in 0 0.7. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Um, I am actually, I really like that. So the writing experience is really nice on this paper. I knew it would be, like everyone has been talking about it. This is the Pilot G2 in 0 0.7. I really like this and like the indents that it does on the paper is so nice <laughs> like I cannot wait to get that crinkly like thin paper sound um this one is actually a pop-in pen so I don't know anything other than the fact that it's a pop-in gel I got it at um the container store of all places 
it writes really nice. Oh, it definitely smears. <laughs> um, but that's to be expected. I heard that this paper, um, you kind of have to be patient with it as it needs a bit extra time for some pens to dry. Now these two didn't need very much at all. Like they were fine right off the bat. This is the Zebra Sarasa Dry, which is another pen that I heard does really well on this paper. And this is in 0 0.7. Yeah, that does really well. And I actually really like how that writes on there. And it's like, I don't know if you can tell, but it writes like super black compared to those three. So I love when I can get like a true black um, out of a pen. Uh, this is another favorite. This is the Pentel Energel. Um, I think this was like the pearl version, which I think is literally just because it's a white pen. <laughs> Um, but let's try this out. Uh, this is definitely not a favorite, so yeah, I just, I don't like how that wrote on there. Uh, next we have a Pilot Precise and V, um, Pilot Precise V7 RT. Um, so this is actually a favorite pen of mine. Um, like a very handy trusty pen but on this paper I don't actually like how it wrote and it actually smeared a little bit so yeah that's um surprising but I think the zebra sarasa dry is still like one of my favorites right now uh this is the zebra sarasa dry air fit grip in 0 0.5 Um, so this one smeared a little bit, but I actually really love this pen as well. Again, it's like super black and I don't know, it's, it's a nice writing experience. So these two pens, it's looking like the Zebra inks are really work really well on this paper. This is a pen that a lot of people say that they love with this paper, which is the Energel Klenna. Um, in 0 0.5. Again, I don't know if it's the needle tip. Um, I mean, it definitely wrote well on the paper. You can see the indents. I love that, though. I'm really liking thinner paper, so. You can already hear the crinkle. Um... I will say I like this one more than the Pearl. Um, I definitely like wrote more bold, but I don't know what it is. I feel like this is definitely like a sometimes used pen that I feel like I could like on this paper. This is the Villa Beautiful pen. Um, I don't really have high hopes for this pen. It doesn't do bad. But honestly, these are not my favorite pens of all time, so um, I don't know. I'd have to use it more to see if it ends up skipping because those I have like major skipping problems with those pens. And then this is the Zebra Sarasa Grand. Ooh. This is definitely a favorite. <laughs> I think it's safe to say any zebra pen is going to write really, really well on them. Um, we're down to the last few pens. This is actually one that I picked up from Aura Estelle, so I don't really know the name. I think it was like, uh, I don't know, it's a rollerball pen, so... Yeah, major smearing, but it did write really well. And even you can see like at the front, those few seconds you gave the ink to dry um, definitely helped. Ooh, and it actually bled through. So if you can see that, 
which I heard this paper is like really good for not bleeding through so that kind of worries me um okay we have this basic Erin Condren ballpoint pen yeah not much to say about that it's a typical ballpoint now I do want to try and I almost forgot because I put the other one in with the weeks um, but this is the Hobonichi Techo pen. Yeah, I do really like the Hobonichi pen. So, yeah, there's that. Um, but I do really love the zebras that I've been trying. But this is definitely a good, like, on-the-go type of pen. Okay, so... Next, we're going to try out my fountain pens, which I heard um, the type of paper you use with these pens definitely matters. And I also learned from my other video that I've been holding the pen wrong, um, that you're not supposed to hold it like a normal pen, but I don't know. That's just how I use it. So this is the Twisby Eco medium nib I will say right off of the bat yes yeah, it's, it's definitely going to need some time to dry um but I do love the writing experience I get um with using this pen on this paper so it writes really nice. It's definitely a lot more smooth. Um, where I'll well, this pen was smooth to begin with. The real test is gonna be this pen because this one was super like scratchy. So let's see. It's still pretty scratchy, but I think that's just the nib at this point. Like, could you hear that? Um, I don't know. I definitely want to, like, keep playing around with these because I also heard it could be the ink that I'm using. So, yeah. Other than that, yeah, see, after a, a little bit of drying time, those definitely... See, yeah, so even that super thick, juicy pen did not bleed through. So, I don't know what it was with that Aura Cell pen that made it do that I love the way this page feels after writing on it um, okay so next we're going to do some markers so we have this um, Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip I just wrote my name so no bleed through definitely some shadowing um but that's I'm not even going to comment on ghosting because that just comes with this paper next we're going to use the Erin Condren <laughs> yeah definitely gonna need some time to dry but let's see Oop, let's tap that yeah no bleed through so it just needs drying time and then we have this Tombow marker which tons of people use um, on these papers or on this paper <laughs> yeah I just kind of want to like see how much I could build this up like it's like definitely building up yeah as you can see it's like warping but if you give it dry time yeah this paper definitely can hold a lot <laughs> I'm scared to do much more than this, honestly. 
yeah, I think we'll give that a break. Wow, it still hasn't bled through. So this paper is really nice. So that was the Tombow. Tombow Duel. Uh, and then we have a mild liner. Right. The mild liner. And then the last marker I have is the clean color dot zig. And that one might not be the best to test it with. Let's do a darker marker. Yeah, <laughs> I did, I got a little bit of transfer there. So yeah, uh, this, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to play around with markers. I wasn't really trying to see much. I was just, I don't know. So yeah, there are my swatches. Let's grab a blotting sheet. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. This is literally just for my reference on, oh, and those are already dry enough to where they're not transferring. Okay, let's play with some watercolors, which is the thing I've been most excited to test out. So, like I said, the most watercolor experience I have which I think is what most people have. Um, I'm not an artist by any means. Um, I just kind of have played around with the Crayola watercolor things, like the little palettes. That you okay, so I didn't realize that my phone had stopped recording, so I apologize. Um, uh, you missed me doing this, so I think what I'm gonna do is do a another swatch with you guys so that you can see kind of what it's looking like so you just add a little bit of water Ooh. um so yeah it's really nice this paper is definitely withholding its own um and then i just Add a little bit more water. I literally have zero experience with watercolors, um, but I just thought that this might be fun to experiment with. And like I said, before I buy a big um, palette, like more expensive, like um, professional type, I don't know, I thought that I would experiment with this first. And it's actually proving, I looked at the reviews while I was in the store um, and people said it was like really good. So for $11, you can't beat it. And it's definitely doing its job. This is definitely fun. Um, but yeah, so I kind of want to get into art a little more. I've never been good at art. But I think like just incorporating more artsy things into my journals would be like kind of fun. So yeah, I just filled this little barrel down here up with water, and it's really fun. So I'm going to let this dry, and I will be right back, and we can, like, kind of talk about the paper and our closing thoughts. So I will be right back. Okay, so for the most part, it's dry. I went in with a paper towel and kind of, like, dotted around some more of that color, um, but yeah, I mean, this isn't for any purpose other than seeing what watercolor looks like on the paper. Um, 
I know a couple people who have watched use watercolor or any type of paint in their planner suggested getting one of these um to use to protect the paper and I see now why be or I see why now because um the paper underneath this kind of got warped from I think just like the wetness being there um it's not that big of a deal this is literally just a practice notebook but I would definitely invest in one of these if that is something that interests you is um, adding paint and things. So, I mean, the paper is definitely warped, but I see why people are so, like, drawn to Hobonichi, um, in this paper. Um, of course, the paper is changing next year, but I do have a couple samples of that that I might, like, play around with as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I guess we should probably say... I, I mean, I guess I kind of already touched on it, um, but some of my favorite pens would definitely be any type of zebra ink. Um, it works really well on this paper. Of course, I love the Hobonichi pen that they give out for a more thin line. Um, the Paper Mate Ink Joy Gel also worked really nice on this paper. So if I had to pick some, that would those would be my favorites. Um, and then I'm just, I'm so excited to kind of experiment and play around. I really do love this little watercolor set. Um, that's where I like put the paper towel on there. But they do dry down um, awfully quick. So that one's already dry. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, definitely let me know um, if you liked videos like this and if you want to see anything else from my channel. Until then, I will see you next week with all new videos. Bye guys!